Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this gift card gift box. There is a secret little pocket here on the back to hold a gift card and it opens to reveal I have one of the C.O. Bigelow Lip Shines. So this is a really great size box. I know that you can fit Hershey's Kisses in here, a roll of Lifesavers, Hershey's Nuggets, all kinds of fun stuff. Now I did size it to fit this lip shine, but it's a really good sized box. So the finished measurements of the box part are four and a quarter inches by one inch by one inch. So it's a really cute box and I love this brightly gleaming designer series paper. So let me show you how easy this is to make. We're going to start with a piece of mossy meadow cardstock that measures six and a half inches by six and three quarter inches. And along the six and three quarter inch side, we're going to score this at one inch, five and a quarter inches, and six and a quarter inches. I'm going to rotate it clockwise and we're going to score this at two and a quarter, three and a quarter, four and a quarter, and five and a quarter. Also, I'm going to score this at one and a quarter, but stopping at that first horizontal score line. So I think you can see that there's a little short score line there. That's just going to help us cut where we need to cut. Next, I'm going to fold and burnish on all the score lines. And then I'm going to bring in a template here. What we're going to do next is with the paper snips, I'm going to cut up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at the horizontal score line. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side. The only difference here is we're going to go up to the second horizontal score line, but again, cutting up each of the vertical score lines. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start removing some of the pieces. I'm going to start with this section here on the bottom. I think my template is actually backwards here, but I'm going to go ahead and remove this lower right corner as well as the lower left corner, but we're going to remove both of these two sections. Then on this side, we're going to remove these two sections in the lower right. And then just this one section here. Okay, so it's starting to look like this. So we've removed these four corners. The next thing I'm going to do in this part, I like to use the paper trimmer, which is now available for customers to purchase. I'm going to show you on the template here. I'm going to basically cut a couple of the tabs in half. So on this side, I'm going to tuck this middle section under because I don't want to cut that. And then I'm going to line up this cut edge here at the half inch mark. And what that's going to do is to cut these little one inch squares in half. Now you can certainly eyeball that with your paper snips. I'm going to do the same thing on this opposite side. If you pay attention to where you've got the little half tabs here, I want the same ones here. So we're going to fold these two sections out of the way because we don't want those to be cut. And again, I'm going to line up this cut edge at half of an inch and cut those tabs in half like that. Again, you can totally do that with your paper snips. Now with all these little half inch tabs, I'm going to come in and notch them. And then I'm going to come in with the detailed trio punch and we're going to round some corners. So I'm going to round these two corners here, these two as well, and then this little long tab, that's going to be the tab that tucks into the side of our box and rounding those corners makes that fit easier in there. So let's just do this one by one. Kind of fold the paper out of the way so I can get that right into the guide there. And then working on this little long tab, again folding paper so I have a flat edge here to feed into the punch guide. Like so. Okay, now we're going to adhere some of the designer series paper before we're going to punch a couple of circles. So. I've got four pieces of the brightly gleaming designer series paper. The largest piece measures two and one eighth inches by four and one eighth inches. The next largest piece measures one and one eighth by four and one eighth. 
And then I have two pieces that measure 7 eighths by 4 and 1 eighth. And the trick is I just cut a, a 4 and 1 eighth inch strip and then cut out these pieces. Now on the two larger pieces, we want to round the top two corners. You also want to make sure that if you have a directional paper that your pattern is in landscape mode. So bringing back the detailed trio punch, I'm going to round the top corners of the two largest pieces. And then we can start to glue these pieces down. I'm going to start with the largest one. And again, you want to make sure with the rounded corners, your pattern goes from top down if it's directional. So that pattern goes in this direction. I'm going to rotate this 180 and we're going to do this piece here. And then the next two sections. Now I'm leaving designer series paper off of this one because it's the bottom of the box. You can certainly add paper there if you like. Okay, so the paper's glued down. Now before we glue this box together, we need to cut out a couple of paper notches. So I'm gonna grab the one inch circle punch and I wanna show you on this box. I only put the circle notch on the back side of the box. If you wanted to have it go through both, you would wait to punch out this circle till you've put the box together. But I kind of like that the front of the box, there's no punch out there. We just have the one on the back. So I'm gonna take that from the largest panel here. I'm gonna come in with a one inch circle punch and I am centering it and going in almost halfway into the circle and punching that out. Now, we also wanna make sure that we have a little finger notch here for the recipient to be able to open this little tab easily. So I'm gonna create that with the half inch circle punch and that little finger notch is gonna come out of this side right here. So it's the side of the large panel that doesn't have the tab and I'm just gonna eyeball this. I've got the side of the punch a little bit over the score line there and punching that out. Okay, so now this is the really cool part about how this goes together. Just gonna grab some tear and tape and I'm only going to run it right along the edge of this narrower section. Now it's okay if you have a little bit of tear and tape hanging over, I'll show you how to fix that. But this is gonna ensure that our gift card can slide into the box and see how the tear and tape's not in the way. All right, so using my take your pick tool, I'm gonna peel off the backing there. And then you can just fold this back if you had any extra, just to keep it away from that rounded edge. Here's what's really cool. I'm gonna fold on this center score line here. If you're going from the large panel up, it's the second score line. If you're going from the small panel, it's the third score line. But you'll see that those ends are going to meet. Now I have this completely flat. This can also be stored flat for when you're ready to use it. Like so. Now the box is gonna to go together like this. How cool is that? Love it. Now before we glue this end together, I'm gonna to do myself a favor and tie the bow now because I tried to tie the bow after I glued the box together and it was just a little bit more difficult. We're using the 3 8 of an inch denim ribbon. I love how this pairs with the brightly gleaming designer series paper. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a little bow around the top part of this little gift card gift box. Okay, now a little trick to get your ribbon to stay put. Let me slide this to where I want it on the box top here. I'm gonna grab a mini glue dot and we're gonna tuck that right underneath the knot of the bow and that means that ribbon's gonna stay where we want it, like so, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and put our box together. Now I purposely made one end glued shut, the other end can be opened and closed because maybe the recipient wants to re-gift this to someone. So that way they can take out their lip gloss or their treat and put in something else to give to the next person and pay it forward. So let's start on the end that's gonna be glued together. Now this will be our front panel here. So I'm gonna fold in the two tabs. Now because we cut those ha in half, they're not gonna overlap there. I'm just gonna grab some liquid glue, and place it on those two tabs. And then the front tab. So I'll fold the back one, trying to keep that ribbon out of the way. And then the front one, and then we can kind of square that up. We can also put in our lip gloss and press that down to adhere that from the inside. Now we fold in these two tabs and tuck this in. 
How cute is this gift box? Let's go ahead and slip our gift card. Now this is just my little car wash card, but that will fit right in the back there. I love this. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of stamping. I'm gonna be using the Christmas Gleaming stamp set and the sentiment Merry Christmas. I love this. I'm gonna stamp that in Night of Navy on Very Vanilla. And then I'm just gonna use my paper snips to fussy cut that out. I'm leaving about a 16th of an inch of the Very Vanilla. Then I've got a piece of Mossy Meadow that measures three quarters of an inch by two and three sixteenths. Those are gonna to layer together. I'm gonna pop that up on three dimensionals. And then it's totally up to your preference if you wanna put that in the center or off to the right. I'm gonna do it off to the right here because it kind of offsets the ribbon, but I like it both ways. And there is our gift card gift box. I love how this turned out. It's a beautiful gift box with this brightly gleaming designer series paper. And you can fit so many things in this little box. I love giving gift cards for the holidays. The recipient can get whatever their heart desires. And even adding a little gift like treats or a lip gloss, just a really great gift. And you can certainly change this up for birthdays, anniversaries, all kinds of fun things. So I'd love to see what you make with this. I know that you'll come up with so many great ideas. So thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. I have options to subscribe to both my monthly newsletter as well as my daily blog updates, and I'd love to welcome you as a new subscriber. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle, and I'd love to welcome you to my team of Paper Pixies. You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like a complimentary copy of one of our catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash catalogs. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made. So feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.